This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! Music is groovy, though. Upon arriving home, I ran straight into my mom, embarrassing myself yet again. The mood I'd come home to was already on edge. It's not an uncommon thing in our family. Whenever Dad can't come up with a good idea, it always ends up like this. He stomps around the house with his arms crossed. Mom whispered into my ear. <laughs> Would it kill them to have given Keiichi's mom and dad sprites? Like, come on. Yeah, we all need our rest. Dad's paintings feed our entire family. If he runs out of ideas, then it's the end of the Maibaras. We've never gone hungry before. Could it be that my dad is a master painter? <laughs> Never mind! That's quite a bothersome motif. Uh oh. <laughs> Ah, oh, come on! Please don't use my room as the motif! Did we already wash the faint off of our face, or are they just politely ignoring it? Dad's moods are only temporary. As soon as he gets an idea, his mood improves and he starts humming. <sighs> Until then, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get just go take a walk so I don't aggravate him further. I know, I'll walk to the nearest KFC. I said I was going to take a walk, but I didn't have any particular destination in mind. That's the best kind of walk. I just needed to kill some time. I got on my bike and pondered where to go. I could just go read at the bookstore, but it would take about an hour by bike to get into the t to get to the town. It would be dark by the time I got back, so I didn't want to go unless I had to. You'd miss dinner, you can't do that. The roads at night here in Hinamizawa creep me out. If Mion or Satoko ever found out about that... I smiled wryly. Oh yeah. Rana was probably still at the Mountain of Treasure, the damn construction site. The excavation of Colonel Randy was probably taking her a while. It wouldn't be so bad to have her owe me one. Now you're thinking with portals. With a little bit of self-interest in mind, I set off towards the damn construction site. Tomotake san might be there as well. Maybe he can give me workout tips. The only person with information about the incident that both Rena and Mion denied knowing anything about. Maybe this guy was just messing with us. But given that this is a horror game, I don't think so. If I met him again, I'd like to ask for more details. To ask, was there really a dismemberment here in Hinamizawa? That was my real intention. Dang, this place is pretty, though. That's... that's a sketchy-looking bridge. Look at all these BGs! Wow! That was like 10 BGs in the span of about 15 seconds. I spotted Rena struggling up on the slope of the garbage pile. It looked like Colonel Randy was lodged in there pretty firmly. It didn't look like Rena would be able to excavate him by herself. Realizing that Tomotake-san wasn't around, I began climbing down the slope unsteadily. She's still in her school outfit. Ooh, also, Proxima, you might be able to help me with this. Uh, the voice actress who voices Rena, is that the same voice actress who voices Nagisa from Clonade? Because they sound really similar. <laughs> a place like this, huh? I see. She was aware of it, at least. Oh, proper. <laughs> oh, proper. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, I thought so. They sounded... There have been several parts where I'm like, they sound exactly the same. Keichi, did you ever wash the magic marker off your face? Or are you just going around with the writing, I am stupid on your face everywhere? Well, I filled my quota for today. If I don't see Rena blush at least once a day, then I'm not getting my daily required nutritional intake. <laughs> Alright, that was a good one-liner. I just ignored her bewilderment. Uh, this is a construction site that happens to have a large amount of garbage here. Where's Colonel Sanders? We can dig him out. Well, there's a crane right here. Is it still operational? The Colonel Randy was sideways, surrounded by boards and other construction materials, like they were caging him inside. According to Rena, it wasn't like this yesterday. It seems as though another illegal dumper came yesterday, dumped again, and now he's buried like this. Oh, so they're just... the People are illegally using this as a dump, basically. Mm, yeah, that's how it is. We all know that Rena is somehow the strongest out of everybody. Don't ask me how. There's no way she would be able to do that with her slender arms. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Again, I know that this face of hers is supposed to look cute, but jeez, this is terrifying. If Rana gave up this on this Colonel Randy, she'll probably start devising a plan to steal the one in front of the store. As Rana's guardian, I won't allow her to sully her hands with crime. Um, she has parents, right? <laughs> Rena blushed again, but this time I left it alone. At the very least, we've heard reference to Rena's mom, so... The pile was enormous. Also, the more days we wasted, the more likely another illegal dumping would occur. If it got buried any deeper, then there would be nothing that could be done. Operation Save Colonel Sanders is underway. That's rude. Pulling out scraps, bending them, tossing them aside. I quickly became covered in sweat and dust. I hope you have a shower back at your place. Flying objects drew beautiful arcs across the twilight sky, one after another. This isn't twilight sky. Lumber, timber, plywood. Damn it! No matter how much I threw out, there were still more! More! <laughs> Even though I could see Colonel Sanders right there! After grandstanding like that in front of Rena, I felt frantic because of how little I had progressed. Yeah. Do it for the girl. Rana began spluttering and turning beet red. She, actually, this is she's not blushing here. Ah, whoops, I meant to say I was trying my best so as to keep her from becoming a criminal. Oh, well. Are we going to have our first romantic kiss at the dump? Oh, well, it's sunset now. <laughs> His mom's like, Keiichi, are you going to come eat dinner? Uh, <laughs> he must be doing his homework. I sprawled on my back over the grassy slope. Rana patted her handkerchief against my forehead. It felt pretty nice. I'm waiting for the game to get scary. Ooh, wow, we already get to go to a girl's house. Leaving the handkerchief on my forehead, Rana took off running. Or is she just running to her own house and bringing me something from there? Oh well. The cries of the Higarashi gently cooled the air. After I was certain that Rena had gone, I picked myself up and headed towards what I'd discovered earlier. That was a garbage pile of magazines and newspapers bound up in twine. Unless I'm mistaken, I believe it was around here. There it was. They were bound stacks of not-so-reputable tabloids. 
They were stacked chronologically, going back quite a few years. It was quite a disturbing incident. They still haven't found one of the arms. If it was just as Tomotake-san said, then undoubtedly there would be mention of the murder. These are troubled times. There is no end to these sickening incidents. There's a large part of society drawn in by these incidents as well. So it had to be recorded. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Ooh, music's getting intense now. So it had to be recorded somewhere. Also, uh, I know there's like a bicycle and then like a piston underneath it, but it looks like the bike tires are eyes and the piston tire, or the piston is teeth. So it's like, yeah, it's like mechanical face. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that's what I'm seeing. I unfastened the packages and opened the rain-soaked pages carefully, looking over the table of contents. Not here. Next one. Not here. Next one. It was hard to search since I didn't know what had happened. <sighs> I didn't know who the perpetrator or the victim was, either. I only knew that it had happened here. I looked up every so often, checking to see if Rena had come back or not. I wouldn't want her to see me gawking at a dirty magazine, but it wasn't just that. Both Rena and Mion said they didn't know. But it had happened, without a doubt. Or that guy was messing with you. As long as Tomotake-san wasn't lying. You, you met him for two seconds! You have no reason to trust this guy. For all we know, he could have been the guy who dismembered the person. Then if both Rena and Mion... Ah, yeah, there it was. If they had just said that, then I wouldn't have gotten so hung up on it. An incident that neither Rena nor Mion wished to talk about. Trying to uncover it after they tried to conceal it out of good intentions. That made me feel like I was acting against my friends. Whoa! Photo negative. Hinamizawa dam worker lynching murder by dismemberment. Here it is. The featured article was in the back, and it seemed like there was a photograph on the colored pages at the front. The pages of the featured article were stuck together and weren't easy to open. Rena could return at any moment. Feeling rushed, I gave up and opened the photograph page. The police investigators were carrying a body bag, and newspaper reporters were all bathing it in cam camera flashes. The image was blurry and hard to understand, but I could definitely make out the headlines. A tragic nightmare at the Hinamizawa construction site. Lynching and murder and dismemberment. The victim of this was the site foreman. He had assaulted his assailants daily with... An explosive backlash from his daily actions? It's a horrible image to see the site foreman as... It happened. It really did happen. It seemed the details were on the next page. I turned the page without pausing. On it was... The assailants butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pickaxes then used the axe to split the cadaver into six pieces, the head, arms, legs, and torso. I can understand just from the headline that it was just too terrible an incident. Normally a lynching is just assault and murder, right? Dismemberment with hatchets and pickaxes? That wasn't a lynching. It was a merciless killing to the letter. A brutal murder. Um, lynching is brutal too. Done by a group of people. With hatchets. With pickaxes. With a hatchet. <laughs> um, were you carrying a giant knife? <laughs> Rena dropped the hatchet she was holding onto the ground. What? She was carrying a hatchet? Why? She's trying to freak us out. <laughs> That was really unfortunate timing, Rena. Also, why the heck do you have a hatchet at your house? Rena fluttered her arms in a panic, continuing to explain and apologize. It seemed I'd been glaring at her pretty intensely. I don't know why she has that. Also, that looked like a butcher knife, not a hatchet. Night was drawing to a close. I was pretty worn out, and it wouldn't hurt to do the rest tomorrow. Sometimes 
そうだよね<笑>早くランディ君を持ち帰りしたい By the way, did you get permission from your parents to take a giant life-size Colonel Sanders statue home? No! <laughs> We both knew that it was useless to apologize any more than that. I quenched my first with the barley tea Rena brought and wiped off the sweat that had now gone cold. We took the path to head home. I felt quite guilty about the tabloid wrapped up in my jacket. I mean, she, maybe she just thinks it's a dirty Playboy magazine. Which is probably worse. No, definitely worse. New tips unlocked. Well, I, I do love beef tips, so... Achievement unlocked. One man's trash. Oh, why do we get the creepy picture of Rena as the, as the <laughs> achievement now? Uh, let's look at the new tips. I like the tips, how they're like bonus scenes that you can do if you want. The Hinamizawa Dam Project. Yes. Start with this one. October 1975. In accordance with the Prime Minister's Bulletin Number XXX, Hinamizawa's Electrical Department Master Plan was announced. Or development Master Plan. The vast scope of the projected Hinamizawa Dam was to have an incredibly heavy impact on the village of Hinamizawa. The area to be flooded by the Hinamizawa Dam would include the five areas of Hinamizawa, Takatsudo, Kyuotsu, Masumoto, and Yaguchi. I definitely butchered some of those pronunciations. The submerged area would include 291 houses. Population, 1,251. One elementary school. One middle school. One post office. One agricultural cooperative. One forestry department lumberyard, five shrines, two temples, and one fishery. Well, the fishery is going to get bigger. All of these communal, cultural, agricultural areas and places of worship were to be indefinitely submerged at the bottom of the artificial lake basin. Why? Forsaking the hundreds of years our ancestors poured their blood and sweat into this fertile, resource-rich land was just too painful to bear. All the residents having homes that were to be submerged banded together and created the Onigafuchi Guardians. The dam project was halted and petitions to alter the plan were circulated. The citizens sought peaceful negotiations, but the government and its puppet company Redacted openly refused. Performing unspeakable heinous acts, they quashed the democratic actions of the villagers. But the villagers did not falter. Instead, they banded together even more closely and steeled their resolve to protect their homes to the death. I admire it. The continuation of that frightening Hinamizawa dam construction project is still stalled as of today. The villagers understand that the stalling was caused by sublime power for unity, and they understand that this fearsome plan had not yet been fully withdrawn. The only Gafuchi guardians had been dissolved after it did its part, but the feelings of unity it garnered have not yet been extinguished. As long as that passion resides in the hearts of the residents, they'll be able to confront whomever next decides to sink their homes into a lake basin. Onigafuchi Guardians Committee Chairman, Kichoru Kimiyoshi. Don't, I don't know who Dad is. Special tabloid report. Is this Keiichi reading the rest of it when he gets home? Nightmare befalls the Hinamizawa Dam. Lynching and murder to dismemberment. On X day of X month in X prefecture at the Hinamizawa Dam Construction Works site in Shishibone City, a bone-chillingly gruesome murder and dismemberment. Even though this case has shocked the archipelago, the police will give no details on the case. Exactly what happened at the Hinamizawa Dam. They probably didn't mean to kill him at first. But as the victim resisted by swinging around a shovel, the rest of the perpetrators armed themselves in return, and it quickly escalated to homicide. So said the aforementioned investigator A. After this bloody tragedy was over, they were left with a body which nobody could have mistaken as alive. XX San had tormented the suspects daily with his rough behavior. At first it was meant to be payback. All the perpetrators were horrified by their deed, and one even turned himself in to the police. It was the de facto leader of this group, Redacted, who suggested hiding the body. Reluctantly at first, they began to think they did not wish to be caught. The construction site had numerous places to hide the body with six people. They were originally supposed to hide the body and leave the area. But the de facto leader feared that the consciences of the other five wouldn't be able to bear the burden, and came up with a horrifying method to keep them from turning him into the police. 
He devised the heinous method of splitting the body up among them and making each of them responsible for hiding a piece. Redacted had turned the simple manslaughter into a gruesome dismemberment and forcibly involved each perpetrator in order to create a sense of unity between them. Each one participated. But what does this mean? Person A spoke out reluctantly. Redacted had ordered each and every one of them to dissect a piece for themselves. They were hesitant at first, but nobody refused. In for a penny, in for a pound, was what it meant. Thus an unimaginable bloody ceremony began. The perpetrators wept and vomited as they performed the gruesome task. There was one person who stubbornly refused, but Redacted threatened them, saying, Nothing would change if someone else ended up dead, and he gave up in his objections. But Redacted's plan collapsed in the span of one night. Redacted, who had refused to dissect the corpse up until the last moment, had broken down into tears at the hospital, where he was being treated for an injury sustained during the scuffle and confessed. The criminals were arrested one after the other, but the de facto leader, Redacted's whereabouts, are still unknown. Also, the right arm hidden by Redacted has yet to be found. Despite an ongoing search, this horrible individual has so far managed to elude law enforcement. What could the police be doing? It appears that Redacted said he was going to throw the body, right arm, into the swamp. Redacted's car was discovered abandoned near the swamp, but there was no clues to his whereabouts. Redacted didn't trust his companions. One cannot deny the possibility that he had expected his companions to confess to the police and used his car as a decoy. Of course, I doubt that theory. Since he has no car, one would expect him to have a limited area to which he could have escaped to. But within the station, there were rumors going around that he had accidentally slipped and drowned in the swamp when he was to f went to throw away the body. To the locals, that swamp is believed to be bottomless. It's known as the Onigafuchi, the Demon's Abyss, and it's said that the bottom of the swamp is connected to the hellish world of demons. I doubt that very much. The atrocious demon from hell that was redacted. Could it be that he had returned to hell through the swamp? B why did they have a... What is happening? The Jin Dragon, bringer of luck and fortune! Prosperous future! Ladies leaping into your arms! Business success! Promotions! Ambition! Protection from harm! Not just with pachinko and the horse races, but business and even love! Guaranteed or your money back! Jin Dragon, Bra <laughs> Jin Dragon Bracelet DX, one piece. 27,800 yen. That's kind of expensive. It was a tabloid, so I guess we got to the end of the story and it just abruptly went to an advertisement. Alright, well, that was an interesting read, now wasn't it?